I'm Jessica Lee Wen, Director of Marketing at Upside Avenue. Thank you for joining us for Upside Insights, where we check in with investment experts and get their opinions on how we can live our upside. I'm here today with Senior Vice President of Morton Capital, Joseph C2. Joe, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Um, are you back in the office yet or are you still in isolation? Hey, Jessica, thanks for uh, inviting me on today. Yes, so at Morton Capital, we're slowly starting to open up our offices. We have about half the staff and our advisors coming in uh, in shifts on Mondays and Wednesdays, and another half on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and then on Fridays, we close the office down for a deep cleaning. So we're, we're doing our best to, uh, to make sure our staff is protected uh, as well as our families yeah. and clients. The world is such a different place right now with COVID and protests. There's just so much going on. Yeah, you're right. It's a it's a different world, right? We started uh, January 1st, uh, 2020, uh, you know, a new year and very quickly here in, uh, uh, in the first quarter, uh, markets started cratering, COVID was spreading around the globe. Uh, and now we're in a position where I think people are really feeling uncertain about a lot of different things. Uh, uh, their health, their finances, and even, even their personal safety and their businesses um, based on what we've seen over the last, uh, uh, the last few weeks. Um, can you share a story or an experience that relates to that? Well, you know, I would say in terms of um, something currently, luckily, you know, both our, our businesses and where I live, we've been recently re relatively, uh, you know, removed from uh, any of the uh, the looting uh, and, and rioting, but you know this this time of high, ha higher emotions and angst actually got me thinking about uh, uh, something that occurred years ago, back in 2001, I believe it was. Uh, I was actually going into a Wells Fargo branch down in Brentwood, California. It was a sunny afternoon, and actually, as I walked in, there was a couple of young gentlemen walking past me in uh, sunglasses, and they had hoods up. And as I walked into the branch, I didn't see anybody. And I looked down on the floor, everyone's face down. And it dawned on me what had occurred. Uh, the bank had just gotten robbed, right? Oh. And so I couldn't help but wonder, like I got a flood of emotion right in that moment. But I was also thinking like, you could see the terror of the face on the people on the ground. Like, how did everybody handle this in a moment of crisis and, and stress? Um, I so, can't imagine a, how. I can't imagine how nerve-wracking that must have been. I hope nobody was hurt. No, nobody was hurt, luckily. Um, yeah. So what did you find out about um, our brains in panic mode then? Yeah, so as, over the years, I've done some research in behavioral finance. And what I was interested to find is that our brain is actually made up of three different portions. We have what we call the reptilian brain, which is the brain stem. We have the limbic brain, which you know we refer to as the animal brain, and then the neocortex, which is the front part of our brain. And that's responsible for our higher order logic, planning, the use of language. And so um, when we process events, uh, it's usually through those three different brains, and they can have a very different impact on how we uh, respond to different incidences in our lives. That's, that's really interesting. So, you know, you talked about this animal brain, like how do we avoid letting that animal brain take over? Yeah, so I think it's important to uh, understand again, um, I'm going to take it just a step back, right? The, the animal brain, right, is really the seat of our emotions. And the old notion that dogs can smell fear, they have that portion of the brain, and that's the amygdala, holds uh, that fight or flight response. And so, when you're confronted with a crisis or even in an investment situation where your portfolio declines, that portion of the brain can kick in and get very, uh, very, um, uh, what's the right word, agitated or uh, full of blood, uh, where the prefrontal cortex now is essentially not able to function. So I think what's critical is number one, have awareness, meaning when that internal dialogue is starting to go on, be aware that uh, that's what's occurring. Number two, have a level of acceptance that you're feeling those emotions in the moment and that it's okay, that they're gonna pass, that this is not the end all be all. Next, I would say find some sort of release valve, um, deep breathing, taking a walk, getting some exercise, right? Emotions are energy in motion. And so the best way to deal with them is to embrace them and then let them go. Lastly, start to talk and put your feelings into words because that's moving you back to the neocortex, 
which is where your seat of rationality, the logical thinking, the better decision making is going to be done. And talk to someone. That'll help as well. That's really fascinating. Um, so how do we apply this to managing our finances and investing? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think, you know, when someone, when, when we're looking at money, money at the root of it can be very emotional. And so what's interesting is our brains, our biology has not changed much over the last several thousand years, but our society has progressed uh, quite, you know, quite rapidly. And so the biology of our brain hasn't kept up quite as quickly. And so the notion of a perceived social threat, uh, i.e. my portfolio is down in value versus a physical threat can feel the same. And so again, using those same steps, understanding that your emotional brain, right, is making a reactive decision in the moment. It's akin to saying, you know, am I going to trust my neighbor's dog to making financial decisions in the moment? And so again, taking a step back, understanding that you're in this sort of triggered state um, is probably not the best time to be making those decisions. Sounds like self-awareness really has to um, come in play here. A absolutely. Again, that, that's really the first step is the awareness piece, right? If, if you're not in a place of not being aware, you're more likely to make a reactive decision that is probably emotionally based. That's not factoring in a lot of uh, sort of forethought, if you will. Uh, and so awareness is step one. Perfect. Well, Thank you so much for sharing this incredibly um, helpful information on behavioral finance with us. And to our viewers, if you'd like more information like this, um, click on the button to follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and now Instagram. Thank you again, Joe, for um, taking the time to share this helpful information with us. And I hope you stay safe and everyone else stay safe. Thank you, Jessica.